So when you just finished watching the TV series of Neon Genesis Evangelion, and you sit down to watch one of the most critically acclaimed anime films of all time, End of Evangelion. You're either really worried because you enjoyed the original series ending, or you're happy because you didn't enjoy the original series ending. And then the film immediately opens up with Shinji accidentally knocking the cupboard off of Asuka Komoto's body and masturbating to it. The scene is directed in a very uncomfortable way where all you see are shots of the wall and the floor while you hear him breathing heavily and you sort of know what's happening but you're praying to God that you're wrong. And then of course Shinji looks at his hand and says the famous line. I'm so fucked up. First of all, I have no desire to defend Shinji's actions in this thing. What Shinji did was horrible, but I understand why this was written into the film. So when I defend this scene, I'm not defending Shinji, but I'm defending the decision to have these events happen in the narrative. First of all, we need to understand Shinji's mental state and what has happened recently to him. Why don't we start with how Asuka ended up in the hospital in the first place. Shinji was forced by Gendo to watch and Asuka had her mind violated by an angel. In some ways, you could argue he had to watch Asuka get mentally raped. Added on to the fact that the one that made him stand by and watch was his own father, Gendo Ikari. At the moment, he believes Misato has abandoned him and had no interest in him, losing some of the affection he desperately craved. Then of course he meets Karu, who is able to give him the affection he craved so desperately in a close close friend, somebody Shinji openly admits to loving. Karu is also the only character in the show that doesn't ask Shinji to do something for him. He just gives Shinji affection. Almost everything Shinji does is driven by the idea of getting affection from others and being praised by others. The reason he piloted Unit 1 in the first place was because he wanted his father to praise him. He even tells Asuka that the reason he never stopped playing the cello was simply because nobody asked him to stop. Shinji doesn't need to do anything for Karu to care about him, to love him, to praise him. And then of course it is revealed that the person Shinji had opened himself up to the most in the entire series is an angel. And he learns that if he doesn't kill Karu, third impact will happen and the humanity will die. Shinji in Unit 1 is forced to kill Karu. Adding all of this onto how traumatized Shinji was as a person already and how mentally damaged he was, it's not surprising that he did what he did to Asuka. What he does to Asuka is the final straw for Shinji, and this is where he decides that he wants to die. When Miss Sato tries to get him to pilot Unit 1, one, he doesn't even refuse, he just tells her that he doesn't care anymore and he wants to die. He uses what he did to Asuka as an excuse so he can claim he deserves to die. While his actions are unforgivable, they do make sense in the confines of his character with everything he had been through at this point. Shinji also knows what he did was horrible. That's one of the reasons he uses it as justification for wanting to die. It's worth reminding that everything Shinji went through, he went through as a 14 year old boy. He broke mentally and reverted back to primal instinct. He has always been sexually and physically attracted to Asuka, so it's not surprising that in that damaged mental state, when he was so close to just acting on animal instinct alone, when he saw her naked, he couldn't help but pleasure himself. But why open the movie with this scene? Why open the movie with something so utterly disturbing? The audience knows that this is not Shinji, that Shinji is a pretty good person and he would never do something like this. This is an immediate indicator for the audience of how far gone Shinji is mentally. This isn't the Shinji we knew throughout the entire series. This is a broken little boy in a very, very bad position. Overall, while I find Shinji's actions despicable and don't condone them in any way, I'm okay with this thing being in End of Evangelion. But tell me in the comments, would you guys have written it differently? What would you guys have done instead of this scene to show how far gone Shinji is? Or do you think the scene should just be left in there because it really did a great job at setting up Shinji's current mental state? If you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like. 
follow me on Twitter and Mr. Gritchy Box down below, and subscribe for more videos like this. Catch you guys later.